Dear students, in this module we are going to talk about the protein bond angles that exist between the various atoms that constitute a protein. You know that the protein is comprised of 20 different amino acids and that they come together as a polymer to form a protein. Each amino acid has carbon, nitrogen, sulfur, oxygen, hydrogen and some other elements that are combined in order to form an amino acid. Each amino acid comes together with the other amino acid in order to make a linear chain. This chain, if you imagine it linearly, then every amino acid is connected to the other amino acid at an angle of 180 degrees. I will show you an example. If you look at this protein, it is in its linear form and all the amino acids that constitute this protein as shown here, they are linearly combining with each other in order to make a protein. Now, if this molecule were to fold, then obviously the angle that exists between these different amino acids which in its current form is 180 degrees, this angle will change and may get reduced or increased. So, once a protein folds, this linear chain of amino acids and the angle, the intuitive 180 degree angle, it changes to a different value. As you can see in this figure, this is a zoomed in version of two amino acids coming together. Here you can see that there are two peptide bonds which I am highlighting for you in red. So this peptide bond is actually planar. So in effect the entire mobility that can occur between these two planes is around the alpha carbon. So if you look at it closely then it seems like there are two planes and the alpha carbon is there in the middle and these two planes can rotate to give different angles to the alpha carbon bonds to its neighbors. Now once this happens, the proteins get unique properties out of the structure and more so the peptide bond which I just mentioned to you is planar as well as rigid. Let me explain what such an angle actually means. So if you're talking about two planes and the angle that is formed between them, this is termed as a dihedral angle. If I can give you an example. So if you have four different elements that are coming together, for instance, my elbow, my hand, the other hand and the elbow. So there are four atoms. So if I combine the two in the middle, then the angle between my arms that is starting from my left hand, left arm to the right arm. So this is the dihedral angle. So this concept is very useful in studying the proteins as the peptide bond is planar and the two neighboring peptide bonds which uh, exist as planes can come together and make a dihedral angle. So just to remind you that the dihedral angle essentially is an angle between four different atoms and the middle two atoms are considered to be overlapped or st stuck together. Let's see in detail what happens to these angles. So you know that there are two planes and the alpha carbon is there in the middle. Then the angle that exists on the right side is called the psi and on the left side considered as the phi angle. This is very important information and that you should always remember this if you want to look at the protein structures. In this slide I have mentioned that the phi angle starts from the beta carbon, then nitrogen, then alpha carbon and then another beta carbon. For the psi it's the nitrogen atom, carbon atom, alpha, carbon alpha, carbon beta and then another nitrogen. 
So in this way, phi and psi angles are made. And in conclusion, once the proteins fold to take up 3D structures, they make these phi and psi angles, which are very important towards understanding the structure of proteins and visualizing them. More so, if you know the angle, then these angles can also tell you about the properties of each protein.